Good day to you and welcome to today's video on Precious Hobby Time. Today I'm gonna show you how I scratch built this watchtower slash column. I will build six more of these guys to show you how I made them and then we will paint them up together. This one is only base coated yet. As you see, there will also be magnetizing for a whole lot of modularity. This is meant to be part one. Part two will be the crafting of corresponding walls for proper gang stronghold fortifications. Lately I was in the thrift store and bought this box of building toys. I have no idea how this is called, but you can clip together beams and plates to build all kind of stuff. I would have loved this as a kit and I love it now. To build some columns or towers, as I will call it from now on, was very quick and easy. I built 5 shorter towers and 2 a bit taller ones to use up most of the parts in the box. If you like what you watch, you might consider giving the video a like, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. It's very nice to have some reception to the projects and to read what you think of it. Thanks in advance. First, I designed patterns on cardboard to glue together and form the front face of the buildings. These I freehanded to fit between the beams and to create depth on the different faces of the towers. I then traced all originals on cardboard and cut them out. These were a lot of pieces to cut. For most patterns I needed 4 pieces for every one of the 7 towers. In total there were about 150 pieces on these cardboard sheets to cut out. At first this was very tiring, but when I got into a flow, it actually went quicker as you might think. So why do I even build these towers? I was thinking about two projects I wanted to make. Some sort of zone mortalis columns and a gang stronghold. I decided to combine both ideas into one project. With the upcoming walls I can use these pieces for a Zone Mortalis Necromunda board. But I guess I won't use Zone Mortalis stuff that often, instead I would use it for fortifications. Because these will be so modular I can use them for various loadouts on my Necromunda table. After all the cutting began the gluing part of all the parts. I sandwiched the individual parts of cardboard to whole front faces of the towers. These were created to give a good amount of depth to the actual quite larger surface. After sticking them together with white glue I also added a magnet to hold walls and other detail bits later. The 
satisfying was that a magnet fitted perfectly into a hole from my hole punch. After that the cardboard sandwiches got pressed down by something heavy overnight. For the ceiling of the tower I added drywall tape for texture before sandwiching. I also added magnets to the top for later add-ons. The front needed a bit of a trim so that they fit between the beams. The interior bulk of the building was made of foam, cut so that it fits well into the hull. This foam then got textured with aluminium foil and glued in place inside the building.
all the gaps between the front faces and the beams got filled with spackle and got textured. This was the first time I used spackle and it was quite a tedious process. After the gaps were filled, I stippled texture on with a brush. The tunnel slash entryway thingy in the interior foam bulk got cut out again to make it removable. I glued the cross section together so that the whole piece was removable as one. To hold it in place during transport, I wanted to magnetize this cross-section interior of the buildings. The foam got melted with the high temperature hot glue gun to make room for the magnets. The magnets then got added with two-part epoxy putty for maximum durability. The railings got 3D printed. As usual, you can find the links to all the creators in the video description. Here you see me washing the prints and removing them from the printing plate. The railings got added with super glue and off camera I also added a lot of texture paste to the whole towers to add texture to the whole thing. So I took all the assembled towers out and primed them with a light grey. I don't want to miss the opportunity to mention that this step is my favorite step in all the building and painting. When all the different materials become unified color and even the untrained eye starts to see the end product. I base coated with different shades of browns in rattle cans. This gives a solid start to build up upon. The foam bits of the modular intersections 
got primed with black gesso to protect the foam and give it a solid base coat of black to build up. While the rest of the tower is meant to be from very old and weathered metal, these walls are meant to be stone or concrete walls. So I dry brushed with three different shades of grey to make it appear stone-like. A very easy and very fast process. To give the towers some more color, I stippled all the railings with yellow. It's a very uneven coat, so that the rusty brown can show through and give it that old look. The corrugated metal parts of the smaller towers got also painted. Some in yellow and some in red. Also, these little cutouts in the front of the arc got stippled on some paint to accent the shape of it a little more. The ones of the larger towers were painted in blue. I intended to not wash the whole model in the end, so I pre-darkened some spots with a dark brown ink. For example, the inside of the beams and the inside of the arc. This is meant to imitate more depth than there actually is. All the beams got then stippled with a metallic dark to further accentuate that metal look. After that, the whole of the towers got dry brushed in a light tan color. This makes all the little details pop better and be more visible. Special care was taken at the arcs on the front faces to really address the different layers of cardboard. Also on top of the towers, I wanted to pronounce the mesh texture beneath the first cardboard layer. Nearing the end of the whole process, I also added some posters on the walls and hazard stripes to the floors. This helps to bring life to the building, but it also helps to recognize the scale it is meant to be. And finally, it adds visual interest. I'll link the creator of those posters in the video description.
hazard stripes got weathered with some paint chips to indicate their age. Instead of an oil wash, I used oil paints for streaking effects, where water and other seepage may have dripped down over centuries and left its marks. I dabbed little amounts of oil paints over the walls. After that I came in with a clean brush with some white spirits on it to smear the paint downwards. This creates nice little streaks that sell the weathering very well. Off camera I also dry brushed the texture paste with an orangey color to imply it being very rusty. And I added some puddles of weathering effect paints to the floors to break up some of the paint scheme. So here we are with the finished product. I love how those towers came out and I'm really proud of them. The project took a lot longer than anticipated and the towers alone are not that impressive. But I'm really looking forward to also craft some walls and gates to create a complete fortification. What I really like about these towers is that they are pretty modular. I can add ladders and other stuff via magnets. I can remove the internal cross section so that they can be either more or less obtrusive on the gaming table. They could just be some columns that give light cover but are easy to pass through or they can be quite monolithic and obtrusive. I already played a first game with the towers on the gaming board and they were really nice to play with. I really hope you like the end result and the video. If you do so, you are kindly invited to like the video, share a comment and subscribe to the channel.
that's it for today. I wish you a pleasant day and hope to see you next time. Bye bye.